through Kamala Harris's Brat Summer or Donald Trump's podcast tour, both candidates have tried appealing to young voters. As my friend Quavo would say, he does not walk it like he talks it. Hello, world. <laughs> Hello, world. We just wrapped up a great podcast. We had a good time. I think you'll find it very interesting and enjoy it. As my a Harvard poll of 18 to 29 year olds has Harris with 61% support to Trump's 30%. But will this demographic actually show up and vote for either of these candidates? For more on what's on young voters' minds, we're joined this morning by John Avi Rao, president and founder of New Voters. Great to have you with us here on your morning. Thanks so much for having me. You Emory. were just telling me about when you worked under the Biden administration in the White House, just right behind us. Yeah, I know. I was like, this is a fantastic view because I was in the Eisenhower Executive Office building as an intern in the Office of Public Engagement. Uh, working on youth engagement and now uh, doing this full time in, in this nonprofit that I started as a high school club seven years ago. Amazing. And now you're here to talk to us about young voters today, a really important day. The Democrats saw this surge of enthusiasm from young people uh, after Kamala Harris became the party's nominee. So she's very popular on social media, we know, but it's one thing to be popular on TikTok and it's another thing to get this demographic out to actually tick a box and vote for the candidates. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to get them to do that? Absolutely. So I'm the president and founder of a nonprofit called New Voters, which is a youth led 501c3 dedicated to helping high school students find their voice in politics. So this is a largely untapped and underserved population. Four million students graduate from high school every single year, and over 90% of them are eligible to vote by that point. Wow. However, these 18 year old new voters are not turning out to vote at less than half the rate of baby boomers, and they're voting at 40% compared to 75% of those 65 and older. So what our goal is to is to tap into that population by empowering student leaders in high schools to register their peers to vote. And what we found is the most effective way to get young people out to vote is by going to them where they are. So in our case, that's in high schools. We were at a Philadelphia Eagles game two days ago, go birds, um, <laughs> and uh, you know, at concerts and, and the like. And more than where they are, reaching them with people who are proximal to them. So I'm 24. Yes. Uh, I do not consider myself proximal to high school students anymore. You're old. Yes. I'm, <laughs> they, they call me a millennial as an insult. I, I don't understand. I've heard that. Welcome it's, to my world. You know. <laughs> um, but I, I'm firmly in Gen Z, just to make the case clear. Yeah. But um, what I believe the best way to empower young voters is, and the, what New Voters does yeah. as our practice, is having student leaders on the ground, largely high school students, yeah. mobilizing their peers, mobilizing this percentage of seniors who are eligible to vote. Right. And beyond that, there is so much excitement right now mm -hmm. among young voters, among people who, and not even young voters, young potential voters, future voters. Right. And for better or for worse, they're more engaged right now than they will be for the next four years. Okay, so tell me about why they're engaged. Is it issues-based? Is that what they're they're locking into? Because we know that they did come out in really big numbers for 2020. Will do you expect them to do that in this election as well? Absolutely. I mean, I think ex on just the high school arm of it, I've seen more engagement by campaigns, by nonprofits, by schools in educating and empowering high school students than I've seen in my lifetime right. when it comes to engaging them to vote, which I think is a completely different strategy than what we saw in 2020 by yeah. both campaigns. Um, I think beyond that, we're seeing students engage, I mean, A, like you said, just because of the natural boom and bust of the election cycle, it's yeah. a presidential election, it's yeah. on the news, it's on their TikTok feeds, yeah. and their podcasts, um, and they're hearing a lot about it. But I think beyond that, you know, the decisions being made today yeah. impact our generation more than anybody else, yeah. impact these high school students more than anybody else because they are going to inherit the future and they're desperate to have a say in these decisions that impact them. And a lot of them can't vote because they're not old enough. And right. then what we're seeing is they're coming out to mobilize their community, mobilizing the seniors in their school who are old enough to vote. Yeah. It's something that really put it in perspective to me, John Avi, is when you said that for a lot of these voters, Donald Trump was the first president that they ever knew, that they ever remembered yeah. uh, in their lifetime and living under. It will be interesting to see what happens um, come election day or come results day when we start to see these numbers roll in and who this demographic actually went out to support because there was so much effort put into targeting both of them. John, it'd be great to speak to you. Thanks for coming in Thank today. Thank you so much for having me. I Marie. saw that you voted, so you'll be watching as well. Thanks so much. Yeah. <laughs> if you liked that video, make sure to subscribe to the Your Morning YouTube feed where you can find all kinds of new content 
posted every weekday morning.